This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart moments. We are converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life. It's my favorite day of the week. We are doing a Q&A. This is your free therapy session. You can ask your personal questions on this show. So what usually happens is as you ask the questions on each show, I collect them <clears throat> in preparation for the Q&A for each week. So I'm going to start with a question that someone had written on a show where we were talking about in-laws. And he said... He wanted to know how to navigate a situation where the wife and the dad had some ten his wife and her dad had some tension between them and the wife was avoiding talking to her dad and her dad was sending him to take messages to his wife. Yes. Yeah. So I found it a slippery situation because you're the husband but you seem to have a better relationship with my dad and this tension between me and my own dad. There's a mistake he's making, mm -hmm. which a lot of men make. Mm -hmm. You try to get too close to in-laws mm -hmm. because they are cordial. They're happy to know you. They're happy to have a close relationship with you. But you forget that you are the one at risk. You're the one who married there. They did not marry from you. You married from their people. Uh, wait, is he the one who's trying to get close to them? The he is allowing. No, he's allowing. They're always trying to come. Listen, young man, when you marry into a family, they're very curious about you. Yeah. And most likely you're a gentleman and, you know, who does want to feel like they have a son, another son now? And from a good place. It yeah. may not even be malicious. Yeah. But familiarity with in-laws is a time, it's a time ticking bomb. It will explode. Familiarity is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Should anything happen, it will be, it will be almost impossible to resolve it. Don't want apologies between you and your father-in-law. Resolutions yeah, yeah. of problems with father-in-law. Yeah. Misunderstandings, explanations, yeah. follow-up and tension and fallout. Mm. So you don't come too close that there's no a fallout, yeah. a breakup. Mm. The only thing you do with your in-laws, mm -hmm. whether it's your wife or it's your husband, is to let their child, their one or their own, to be on that side, <laughs> close up mm -hmm. with them. You behind the person. Stop being the messenger. They will resolve their issue and she will still remain the one who is who knows their father more than you. Uh -huh. Stop being the messenger in between. Let them keep quiet until they can talk back. Okay? Continue your own side of cordial conversation with that father-in-law mm -hmm. with the right distance. In-laws have this sensitivity. It's a one-way relationship. They are helping you more than you are helping them. They can demolish your family, yet you can't demolish theirs. Yes. Just always remember that. You have more to lose with in-laws. Should they gang to make your life difficult, you can't fight back. You have nothing to fight back with. Yeah. The sisters to your husband have a power you don't have. That's true. They can ruin your family. You can't ruin theirs. Yeah. Do, do, do you see? Yes. <laughs> just and should life go south god forbid somebody dies they can come and invade your family mm. keep that in mind and you'll find yourself very reserved maintaining only courtesy not closeness it's very difficult to keep your distance from good people because they're always offering generosity offering this offering that yeah and they're always asking you to invite them, ask them for every advice, involve them, update them. They're always asking to be involved more. They may even have periodic family meetings where you escort your husband there or your wife there. Okay? Yeah. There are periodic celebrations or whatever. Yeah. You should take them and maintain wary charmingness. Charming but wary. Careful. <laughs> that that Careful. feels like a tight rope. Yes, it me? is. But it's very easy when you realize this is not a place to offload your emotions. You have other places where you usually become carefree. It's not here. These are more than parents. These are parents to your wife or your husband, and they will never have blood direct with you. That's why they are called in-law. Avoid law things. They can go south or east. <laughs> People have been trying to modify it, call it in love. I know. They tell you the truth. <laughs> they tell you the truth. This is just in-law. Listen, not in reality, just in law. I want you to listen to when Ruth 
when Naomi was telling the two daughters-in-law to go back to their people and find other life. Our men died and I can't, I can't help you anymore. She allowed them to go find life because they were not bound by blood. They were bound by law and the law had died when their husbands died. When partners die, until death do us part. So it's by law and it can be parted by something. When Orpa left, nobody condemned her because she, was, she had the right to do it. Yeah. Some of these people can turn away, can become terrorists. The next risk this guy is risking mm. is that as he is getting so close to become the confidant, to be the, the emissary to be sent, mm -hmm. he's also revealing sides of your that may <coughs> become points of vulnerability mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And he gets to create a gap between him and the wife because the wife is, uh, as, as I'm trying, you know, the, the dad knows the girl and he can be telling you some things about her, what he believes, what he thinks. Yeah. And then you should not tell her, you should not tell her what is happening. Creating a distance. Yeah. So that you can be closer to him. Now you're being mentored, I don't know what. Yeah. Now there are things you're not telling her, you're putting it this way, don't tell anybody. These, yeah. are, main, these are main issues. If you're not careful, you can, a distance can generate. Even if today, uh, something happened, my wife is not talking to one of the parents, I'll never become the go-between. One of their own will become a go-between. Yeah, Benjamin, but how come you're talking as if he's, he has some control? It's the dad who went to him. He keeps coming. You know, if a person comes to you, you can still maintain, you don't open all the gates. You can come, I want to see you, have this issue, and I will not allow the bicycle to go free. I will not allow us to start going downhill with that, talking, talking, going, indulging in. Do you understand? You can maintain your reservedness, even when a person is trying to push for that. You can avoid committing. I may not be the perfect messenger for this. I know somebody better. Why don't you talk about his brother? Please send his sister. Now mm. that I have this, she's too, my wife, there is something between us. I suggest, I would rather not. I understand you. Yeah. But let me, let me think about it. I told you that secret always buying time. Oh, yes. Let, let me think. I'll get back on that. Then you buy a week and another one. You can communicate an availability through many ways with the courtesy. And just frustrate. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You, let, okay. you let time pass. You don't always have to commit. In uh -huh. fact, any time a person is trying to talk to you about your partner, avoid committing. Avoid committing. If once you open that door, those people do come in. Yes. They do come in. Never open that door. If there are secrets or some private conversations, I don't know. The first thing you should do is to share with your partner. Yes. Of course, you say the first thing, marry a person you can be friends, trust. Yes. Many marriages don't die for lack of love. They die for lack of friendship and loyalty. Yes. We still have those feelings and chemistry, but can you prioritize me even when other people are trying to yeah. whisper in your ear mm. things about me? So the nakedness of my wife, or the struggle they had, or where they came from, from childhood, all that vulnerable side, everybody has that side. Mm. And nobody knows that side better than your parent. I don't want to hear it. Mm. <laughs> she will be telling me the version that is happy for her to tell. Yeah. I don't want to hear that, let me tell you this, something you may never know. Oh, mm. No. So this guy is allowing poison. He should stop being available, stop being too receptive, and maintain respect with reservedness. Ladies know this technique, almost all ladies, because mm. I've had to say no to a man they respect. <laughs> yes. You can't cast him out. And then they've also had to say no to people who don't take no for an answer. So you have to get very creative with how you will say no. Without Sometimes it's just buying time to let him yeah. just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because when I told you, you refused to hear me. Yes. Yeah. So uh -huh. when it comes to in-laws and people you respect, men know this when they have a female boss who is not as competent. You know, sometimes your boss is not as competent. <laughs> does does yeah. not have the technical skills. Yes. And you have to do the work for them and put it under them to, for them to present as to, to their work. Yeah. <laughs> I came with my technical assistant, uh, Mr. I Benjamin, know. and Benjamin is a real expert. Yeah. <laughs> explain that part and as I explain people wondering this guy understands this. I have a question for Benjamin. Question for Benjamin. <laughs> yeah. So men also have to play this game. When it comes to work men play these games very smoothly because there yes. are no feelings. They are better at it. Yes. Our workplace is regimented like the military. It was invented after Second World War and it was it was designed after the military ranks. Mm. 
So men naturally understand military and they salute senior boss. That is okay for them. They don't even feel anything. Yeah. It's women who struggle with the senior female boss who is also trying to throw some things at you. <laughs> so men yeah. can overlook that easily. Mm. I understand my boss, no problem. So they just do it, they do it and, and that's okay. Mm. So we are saying here, do what you would have done mm -hmm. if this was a boss at work who you have to be careful with, who you have to deny their requests without offending them. Mm. Delay tactics, just unavailability, not being sure, just acting like you also, not being there, just, and uh, a man can show up here right now and apologize to the floor, although it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lawyers know it. We go to the court, my lord, my <laughs> lord, <laughs> you know, we are at your feet. When he knows the guy is wrong, his case is very weak. <laughs> It's a, a favorable determination. Yeah. You see, you know, as every point he says, as my Lord will guide. Every yeah. point he says, <laughs> you feel massaged. Mm -hmm. eh? Most men know that technique. Mm. To massage the big ego. Yeah. To get you away. And yeah. God say, my friend, pay me my money. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> this is a good job. Yes. So if I always ask men to borrow from their job, because mm -hmm. at some point a guy has to play maneuvering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After, get the money, go home, forget the maneuvering. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, that was a very comprehensive answer. Um, there's been this debate going on about should children be beaten or not. In developed countries, beating of children is now taken as abuse for any reason to any extent i wanted to hear your thoughts on it is it possible to parent without beating your child do you remember when i told you that your religion colors everything in your life mm -hmm. parenting is inspired by your religion mm -hmm. the bible says if you're a christian that you should use the rod on the child there's a mm -hmm. foolishness bound in them if you beat them the rod they will not die it just says it that way Mm -hmm. They will not die. <laughs> 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 to put it that plainly. Yeah. Proverbs 20 something, I'm trying to remember. Uh -huh. But I just saw, and I liked it. I just, there are two verses following each other. Uh -huh. And telling you that there is foolishness naturally bound in the, the heart of the child, and the rod of correction drives it out. Uh -huh. This is correction, this is not abuse. Uh -huh. So when you do not show the child limits, they do the story you saw in your childhood when the boy was being sentenced and he asked for permission to whisper something to the mother before he goes to his life sentence. Mm -hmm. And instead of whispering, he beat out the ear of the mother. <laughs> uh -huh. The judge asked, why did you do that? She did not pinch my ear. Oh. She did not warn me. Many people, if you don't pinch their ear, they will hurt you more when you see how where you are they go. Mm. The Bible, the creator already said, a child left to themselves that follow impulses. There's a warning. Mm -hmm. um, before you advise people, there's a motivational speaker, just do what makes you happy. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying let's let them do everything, but just, are there other yes, alternatives? Just do, no. Just do you. This, this doctrine of do you, God makes you happy. If you let a child do what makes them happy, they will eat sugar, they will play the whole day, they will sleep the whole day, they will do the wrong thing, they will, they will ruin themselves. True. Your feelings sometimes are also like a child. And you can't do always what makes you happy. You have actually to say not what, what, what looks pleasurable. Yes. What makes a child happy, genuine lasting happiness, is when they obey the rules of their home, the guidance yeah. of their parents, then they enjoy their freedom within the confines mm -hmm. of the home. Mm -hmm. They don't kick the ball to the highway. They don't just go to lay, lay down to the railway. They don't just go, okay? Yeah. So you, you, there is no alternative to boundaries and correction. No alternative, unfortunately. There's an alternative to, there are degrees of negative reinforcement. A caning is one mm -hmm. form of negative reinforcement. Negative because it uses pain. Okay, okay. We have other positive reinforcement of <coughs> praising what you want to see more of. Mm -hmm. Praise alone doesn't get it done. You must first of all mm -hmm. establish boundaries. Yeah. From the child, when they even they're breastfeeding, they bite you. You 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 pinch them. As early as before they even know the world, they bite you. They want to exercise their gums. You, yeah, yes. <laughs> 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 they don't know whether you are feeling pain. Yeah. I remember my my mother-in-law telling uh, my wife, discipline starts there. You know your finger. Start using not even the cane. Yeah. The cane will come later. This one. They bite. You respond. They, oh, this one goes with that. Okay. Uh. They learn that you also feel something. Yeah. You so feel something. Another thing is rewarding every cry. Mwah, pick, mwah, mm. pick, mwah. You never sleep. Mm, true. <laughs> you try to sleep. Mwah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the thing is, 
And uh, it's very funny when the older mothers are telling you, sometimes let the child cry it out. Yeah. They realize it's not being rewarded, just a tantrum. Yeah. Two men were walking in the child in the supermarket. The child started throwing tantrums the way they do when they see candy toys, everything they want. Mm. And, and then somebody filmed accident. This was a real life mm -hmm. because it was the man and his dad and then his child. Mm -hmm. And men, the men, without even, as if it's a, a silent cord, mm -hmm. they just patiently waited for the boy to roll. The boy rolled, kicked, woke up, continued. Akibatis can be so embarrassing. What? You are taking it as embarrassing. Everybody here has been at all. Many have children. And then you know, when you're a mom, sometimes the society can also be hostile. Like, where's the mother of this child? You know, and acting like you're being you're irresponsible. You're trying to get them to the car. They don't want to go. Yeah. They're crying, going back the other way. Or they're just taking them to the school bus. And today they're not in the mood of going to school. Yeah. <laughs> so they're screaming. If I punish them, people say... No, don't, don't do that. Yeah, Just one guy noticed the wife arguing the child that way. Because the child had not been given enough money to go contribute to something to school. Uh-huh. And they, they had given him some money, but he wanted more. Uh-huh. And he said he won't go to the bus, and the bus left. And the dad in the house preparing hard the commotion. Mm -hmm. And that's the way, what is it? Oh, Junior does want it? Okay, give him to me. And he has sat there. You know, they cry to complain. The cry is a protest. Yeah. And, and, and dad prepares, the bus has left. And then he's going to leave to go to work. The boy mm -hmm. should have left before 8, 15 minutes to 8. Yeah. He leaves around 8.30. Uh -huh. Say, boy, you have let the school bus go. Get yourself to school. And now. Just that. And dad gets to his school. Okay, bus. dads can be. Yeah. Just get wow. yourself to school. How old was the boy? This, this, this. No, the age at which they start protesting, you know? Like Between nine. 5 to 10. It's usually very, that's where they test boundaries. Yeah. They develop independent mind, five, yeah, six, seven, and they try, yes, but, but, mom, you did this to another, why not me, but you get me yeah. there, but you allowed this one, why not me, and I realize you're not fair, fair, uh, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you're like, since when? <laughs> <laughs> you're, now you have to explain philosophy of fairness. Yeah. It's <laughs> a little thing here. <laughs> so, uh -huh. this unpaying tenant who doesn't work, who yeah. <laughs> now has a mind. Even me, I have my <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, now you're in America and they're trying to call police on you? I know. <laughs> so, don't be deceived. Even if they're trumpeting it in America, mm -hmm. you still have to discipline inside your house. You still have to do those things inside your house. Mm. And when you hear anything, we still have... Uh, Muslim schools, Christian schools, where they still teach their values. It is just mm. the public schools where a lot of these things mm -hmm. may be. So you, you cannot let myself become a, a brute, a lost uh, 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 something, mm. prodigal, mm. because you have all these policies out there. Yeah. Yes, so you should discipline your children. Don't abuse. We are not talking about you taking out your anger on them. Yeah. We are saying use positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement. Another negative reinforcement is withdrawing privileges. Uh huh, uh huh, yes. You, 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 your, your iPhone time, your phone time today is out because you overslept, you overplayed, yeah. you stayed in the field too long. Yeah. You know the time. Mm. Make sure the consequences are felt and you're firm. Mm. Don't try to be a friend to your child. Try to be a good parent. Uh -huh. Friendship is, it may come or it may not come. Yeah. If you are always your children's best friend, you're doing parenting wrong. You can't do parenting right and you're the best friend. Just like saying the principal is my best friend. How will the principal lead you, set rules, set standards, push yeah. you to your best when he's still your best friend? For a principal, we wanted a principal who gives us good leadership, good direction, good security, good stability, makes us shine. Not just the best friend. Yeah. You can be warm to children, can be, they know you're friendly, but you have principles they should abide by. And you embody what the school stands for. Okay. That's a parent at home. Okay. Yes. All right. What can I do if I'm in a marriage where there is nothing wrong but no spark? I feel disappointed about it. When I try to create the spark with my wife, she always turns me down. I love her, would never want to leave her, but I feel lonely and empty. Yeah. You hear that statement of, I love her, I never want to leave her. Nobody wants to leave. We, mm. don't, want, we don't marry for divorce. Not mm. sincere people. Mm. Sincere people don't go in to come out. So I'm sorry, my brother, sometimes people are pushing you back for reasons better known to them. Mm -hmm. Walk to therapy with her. And if she does not go to therapy, go by yourself. So that you can know how you can handle a person who won't change and they're the ones killing the union. Mm -hmm. If your partner doesn't go to therapy, go by yourself. So that you can know how to deal with yourself. Okay. How to adjust. 
And at some point after you heal, you can tell them now that you don't want anything to do with us becoming friendly, igniting our fire back. I have to find my fire. I want my joy. I don't want this tension. I can't endure this. I'll get high blood pressure. I'll get depression. Yeah. I'll develop complications for knowing I'm not... I don't have an emotional partner. Yeah. So it's only sensible that I release you and you release me. Yeah. Talk about that gap when if a, if a person like that leaves the union and then has a season where they're alone and now it looks like they jumped from bad to worse, sort of like Egypt to the wilderness. No. Being alone without a tormentor is better than when you are with a person who is not there for you. They are just ambiguously absent. Ambiguous absence is when they are physically present, emotionally absent. Rejecting and invalidating, but they are there. On paper, socially, you have a person. In reality, you don't have a person. They don't agree with you, they don't flow with you anymore, they don't even look at after you. The other day I realized, to my surprise, that feeding a man just preparing meals, and your children, just look at your partner alone. Mm -hmm. Is heavy work enough. But it is heavier when there are special needs. Mm. When you can't ju now just eat everything. You know there are seasons, eh? Yeah. When people need special diet. Yeah. You may have this woman who, providing for each other, meeting each other's needs, was already work. And now, she's pregnant. Uh -huh. Now, she's babysitting. Yeah. Now she's going through school. She's not available. I have to fill in gaps. This brother is paying a lot of cost. What will happen with him if he continues swearing, I will never want to yeah. leave when she has already left? When he continues swearing like that. Or maybe she was never there. Yes. Some people never there. They married as a rite of passage. Yeah. Particularly if he did not date right. A lot of men should screw themselves up by going where I told you. Mm -hmm. Instead of checking the totality of the human being, they start <coughs> tasting her honey. And they get hypnotized. Mm. We are saying, what will happen is you will get resentful and depressed. Mm. We know people who committed suicide. And mm. we know they were depressed by the wife. Particularly mm. men mm. are very common with direct suicide or slow suicide through careless drinking, screwing up their life, their job. Yeah. They start nipango account on just clandestine. So the wife now can blame you. After yeah. starving you and you could not make up your mind to start yeah. another life. Yeah. Yes. So this man should be very, he should negotiate with the, you know, it's very fearful, the possibility that he might have to leave. Yeah. So he's negotiating with that. Yeah. He should negotiate that until Lily, you are willing to say, if it doesn't work, no problem, we can part with. That's when the person is jacked too. So this is real. Mm -hmm. And if they don't wake up, realize I was just mismatched. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, someone had said, please do a show on what I wish I knew when I was 20 years. Maybe you can share with us some things you wish you knew when you were 20. The one message I wish everybody can learn when they are 20, and we saw another 19-year-old being killed yeah. unnecessarily. Aki. The CCTV showing her getting into uh, mm. a lodge with a man at wee hours of dawn, and later she's falling from 10th floor. And the man himself has many stab wounds. Mm. This time, it's like she was not even being hurt by the man. She's being hurt by the other enemies of the man. She's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. And it's, she's only 19. It's chilling. It's just to a parent that is unbearable. Yeah. Why don't you stay in the house? I put you. I know. <laughs> so, and I gave them an example of the buffalo. When the buffalo are moving through the forest, mm -hmm. grazing, Mm -hmm. Lions follow the herd of buffalo, looking for the young ones who stray from the herd. Mm -hmm. And it's always the rule. Mm -hmm. They can't kill you when you're in the powerful buffalo have guard and soldiers. Mm -hmm. The bulls, the male ones. Mm -hmm. They can kill lions. They're very powerful. Mm -hmm. They need many of them to isolate one of them, or one that is sick. Yeah. Naturally, buffalo, elephants are, are not, they're not easy to kill. Yeah. But the young ones who are not strong, who don't know the world, <laughs> can stray, can get excited, stray. So they usually keep behind, mm. looking for those ones. Animal, human kingdom is like that. These predators are looking for the young ones. When you are 20, keep this, man, keep this in mind. Mm. I'm still too young for life. I should be preparing for life. I should not be jumping into the deep end. 
Yeah. I should be just be preparing for life. How do you prepare? When you are 20, you have one miraculous thing in front of you. You have a virgin five years. Virgin block of five years that you can turn your life around. Yes. In five years, you can migrate yourself to first world country or first world lifestyle. Yes. You don't have to take a green card. If you, do, if you want to, you can. But you can get a green card in your Zimbabwe. Yes. <laughs> Live a first world life. Yes. In somewhere in Africa. Yeah. Some people in Somalia are living better than you in Kenya bragging. I know. <laughs> they are yeah. Yes, we want peace all around, but personal choices can change how you live. That's true. And they can make you so mobile that should anything become, you can just fly away. Yeah. Some people are saving their money abroad. Oh, you know what? I always think about Daniel and the three other yes. guys. Because when Israel was taken into captivity, the royals were trans into royalty of the nation they went into exile and Daniel served four kings yes and that man wrote my favorite book I just like to reason with that man yeah he was not castrated as people think he was just uh. disciplined you couldn't serve in the king when you had that kind of blemish uh-huh no he was just so disciplined that people have to explain it away say well he, he, he was important he was not important <laughs> people just find it hard to live up by that standard. Yeah. But you know, Joseph ran away from a beautiful woman, the yes. boss, the, the, the mama. A he ran woman, yeah. and he was punished for it. He stood his ground, came from being a sidekick to a prince. You don't become prime minister if you could not withstand prime temptations. Oh, wow. Hey. But are we paying the price? We just want to smash. Bro, until you can control your urges. You cannot control the country, the territory. You will not build a dynasty until you're being tested by what men are tested by. Unfortunately for you, the devil has studied your generations. He knows what can bring you down. He uses the same things for David as is used for Judah. Women, just that lineage. He knows what gets them. <laughs> he knows what gets them. It's not something complicated. No, you, you can actually predict. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You listen to your body, what, is, what appetites are being activated. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. some, some people can't touch wine because they'll drink themselves silly. Yes. Somebody touches the wine, they hate it, they wake up with a headache. It's not a temptation to them, it's a bother. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Another one sees a fine guy. <laughs> huh? <Yes. laughs> you know? Yes. So, you know your temptation, which side they are in. So, don't yes. start accusing other people when you don't mm. you don't master your own mm. this is to say and, and uh, one 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 person started as someone in a very disturbing way mm -hmm. by asking the surprised faithfuls what turned them on uh, no don't use that language in church praise the lord <laughs> you hey, need anointing hey, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was a, a youth we were youth rally so he was trying to okay. shock us okay. tell us I'm tired of hearing all of you are falling. I want to talk about where you are falling. So tell me where you are likely to fall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so right what about. gets you inside? Yeah. <laughs> what appetizes you? Mm. Samson had already lost self-esteem. He had lost one woman. He wanted to keep this one and prove to himself that he can keep one woman. But the one he was trying to keep was not for him. She was for money. Yeah. Samson was not killed by Delilah. He was killed by money. Oh. <laughs> Some Delari, they paid there. Yeah. And he was sold. But he had an unhealed issue of having lost one woman. Mm. And it's like he, he is determined. When you are too determined to keep the wrong, man, wrong woman, you end up losing yourself, losing your eyes, wow. losing your vision. Wow. You end up grinding when you are meant to rule. He was meant to be a governor. He began grinding flour for people to make bread and be humiliated. Imagine. He died in humiliation for cleaving to the wrong woman. There's a place where it says, the, wrong, the women whom God had told these people not to mix with. To this one, Solomon clung in love. Very unfortunate oh. statement. Mm. To this, Solomon clung. Yeah. Samson clung. Look at the clinging. <laughs> Careful with the clinging. Holding on to the wrong people. And your feelings are feeling like this is the one. When you're 20, just know you're young and use the virgin five years to define your life. Mm. Invest in yourself. Mm. Redefine your identity. Stop being told your name is Benjamin. That's too vague. Benjamin means nothing. There's so many Benjamins. Yes. How many mics are there? 
But it's a Mike Jordan. That's different now. Yeah. Just, 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 just give yourself a definition so that your name registers something. And I think I've written a lot and even done shows. I've mm -hmm. a book, this book in particular for pre-25s. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've told them when you were 20, mm. this book I've told them is to write their eulogy. The last comments about your life. Yeah. There's something called epitaph, the statement on your grave. You can't even craft an epitaph. Mm. Why? You are setting a finishing point. Okay? Yes. When the pilot is taking off or when the ship is beginning, they tell you where they want to go, how high and where they expect it. They have planned their journey to the end, plan your flight to the end. Yes. And you say, if all goes well, I want to land there. Mm. The temptation when you're 20, because feelings are very strong, is to indulge. Mm -hmm. You go counterculture. Yeah. Don't even excite them. We used to avoid places that had a lot of triggers. Yeah. And we appeared like, like hugs for us. Some of us from the countryside were very mm -hmm. triggering. Some women don't barely dress and they want you to lie on that. Touch that? No. <laughs> so she would come hugging everyone in a circle and I step out of the circle. Oh. And do social distancing. They can call you legalistic, but I made it. Don't bother being called Wow. Names. Throughout yes. my four years, I think only two girls managed to corner me to a hug. <laughs> to a hug? Yes. Because I was in a public university of Nairobi. That's the center of rot know. rottenness. Yes. You really have to witness porn. The audio porn in the next room. <laughs> and they, I don't know what they were drinking, what they were taking. Yeah. <laughs> because they couldn't give you rest. Oh. So weekends would exodus. We used to call it exodus. Yeah. On weekends. To find peace. <laughs> Come back when there's a bread. Yeah. Many times when you're 20, it will be a fight. When you're trying to stand, it will be a fight. Mm. You'll be called names, you'll be told you're missing out on fun. But when you finally reach where you reached, until I married a woman who was swearing that she would not have. You know, some women don't compromise too much. In the public, we, we talk a lot. Mm -hmm. But when you come personally to a person who can, who can take you to your destiny, she has her own requirements she's not negotiating about. You can mm -hmm. call her anything, mm -hmm. but she has her own. I realized she was walking the same path. Wow. Many times she ran home on the weekend because there was a guy lying on her bed. Aki campus. <laughs> You find a guy in your bed. Where is that guy in my bed? <laughs> because you're 18 minutes second year. Surely. You can't fight. Yeah. <laughs> you run. Today you come to my bed, my friend. I know. Even the police will come here. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you females, to my, our roommate brings their, and now they have a match today with mm -hmm. the boyfriend. <laughs> my friend, I was never exiled. I think people just never requested me because they knew I can't take the nonsense. Oh, you were never exiled? No. Okay. Exile is when you ask to excuse I know. to do those things. Yeah. They used to excuse themselves. <laughs> so <They> better. <laughs> <laughs> so that we are saying when you are 20, you take that advantage. Some of us don't have, we can never take it. You don't have a burden on life, you don't have family, you don't have burdens, you don't have taxes, you don't have things. Even if you've just graduated and 20, don't rush into dating anybody. Don't, don't, don't. You saw that money to buy books, at, appear in conferences, gate crashing to mentors. Like people are just up, well, read their books, ask them questions, be hungry. Yeah. David, that's, I believe David was writing Psalm 119 when he was doing that. Mm. The longest Psalm, just yearning, yearning, yeah. In fact, one mentor, one teacher told us to think. You know you've reached it when you can think about your calling until it breaks you to tears. And there's nobody, no song singing, no song playing, yeah. nothing to stimulate you. Yeah. And I knew I'd reached there when I could get so obsessed with making my life count. Yeah. And the frustrations of the money, I don't have to walk, you walk to town so many times because it's not a fair. Imagine. And you think on your way, you're just playing your materials. One day I'll drive past this. I'll not always walk this place. How we got ourselves consumed. With the life you wanted to create when you were in your twenties, that's what is happening today. It's not being a call. If you are lucky to be there hearing us, you are chosen by the gods. Start now. Yeah, it's true. My friend. <laughs> it's true. My friend, start now. <laughs> wow. That's powerful. <laughs> it was a guy. That's powerful. I just want to say that we've been getting a lot of good comments from all the people who bought this book before you say I do. Does any stand out for you? Any feedback you've gotten from this book? It is the missing gap. Those who bought this book, this is a set right. of five. Okay. They said this was the book because it guides you how to navigate a relationship. Yeah. All the way to marriage. Yes. The dating right teaches you how to get out. 
how to position yourself, okay. how to yeah. meet your type, yes. how to start conversations. Yes. This is broad, how to transform your energy, step out there, start conversations, yeah. make sure you are interacting. Some people say, since I started dating, nobody talks to me, you have not gone to where people are talking. If you can't see cows on sale, you have not reached cow market. Wow. <laughs> Go until you can see cows on sale. Yes. This book says where cows are. Okay. <laughs> This one is when you negotiate, the person in front of you, are they serious, are they on season? We say the personal check, the cultural check, and the legal check. Checklist. Yeah. yeah. This book guides you how to, is it viable? And how can I lead it forward? Mm -hmm. What conversations to have? How to steer it? How to know when it is uh, promising or when it is not? This is a book for pre-engagement counseling, mm -hmm. pre-marital counseling, mm -hmm. the questions to ask, how to set the timelines, how to avoid temptations. You are in love and you are there, two of you, and it's at night. How do you maintain control? And why is it important? Anyway, shall we not get married? Is it any different? These are the answers. Yeah. <laughs> this book has all the answers. All right, so www.benjaminzuluglobal is where to get all the information of how you can get the books, how you can get in touch with Benjamin, how you can get the podcasts and any videos and any work that Benjamin has done. Thank you so much for watching. Keep the questions coming. We'll be gathering them and doing them in every Q&A session. This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart moments. We are converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life.